The President, please be seated. The court is now in session. Today, the Chamber continues to hear the testimonies of witness Sot Tường. Questions to be put by the co-prosecutors and uh, further questions will be put by the civil party councils. Co-prosecutor, you may now proceed. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. Witness. Um, Mr. Suttung, when we uh, stopped yesterday, um, I was asking you some questions regarding your trip uh, to China and North Korea with Noon Chea. Um, do you recall whether Noon Chea made any speeches uh, during that trip, including uh, when you were present uh, at banquets that were held uh, by Chinese leaders. Response, no, I don't. I was sitting from a distance uh, from his table. I'd like to uh, uh, try to refresh your recollection on that by uh, showing a, a document uh, that is in the case file as IS 20.27. And it is, uh, 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 Mr. President, uh, if I could uh, have leave to uh, give a copy to the witness and also put it on the screen. The President, could you please um, hold on? Uh, Council for Inquiry, you may now proceed. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors, and good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. Uh, the gentleman just indicated that he was far t too away uh, to have any memory. So there's no point in trying to refresh a memory with a document. He's indicated that he doesn't know. Now, if the purpose is to try to get the document in, if the document is already in, there's no need to go through this exercise. We received the gentleman's answer. Also, may I point out that the prosecutor is talking about Chinese leaders. Who are these Chinese leaders? Perhaps the witness should be asked to identify. This is something that the prosecution has indicated by just simply saying, did he meet with Chinese leaders? And now we have this long series of questions about Chinese leaders not knowing who they may be, if they are indeed Chinese leaders, and how would this gentleman know if they were Chinese leaders if he was not privy to any discussions and wasn't sitting anywhere near uh, any discussions being held, assuming discussions were being held between Mr. Nunchia and anyone else. But this document cannot be used to refresh a memory that doesn't exist. Thank you. I, I don't uh, understand that objection. I mean, the point of refreshing memories is because a witness may have forgotten something from 30 years ago. Uh, the witness has indicated that he was present during this trip at banquets. We have a document that's in the case file uh, that is indicated as a speech by Noon Chea at a banquet uh, in Peking given in honor of the uh, delegation from Campuchia on the 3rd of September 1978 and uh, my questions to the witness are going to be very simple. It's whether looking at the document that refreshes his recollection as to whether Noon Chea gave speeches at these uh, delegates at these banquets.
The President, counsel for Yang Sri's objection is not sustained. International co-prosecutor is now permitted to have the document put up on the screen. Court officer is now instructed to bring the hard copy of the document to the witness. Mr. Sotong, uh, are you able to read the cover or the title of the document I gave you, or would you like me to read that uh, for you into the record? Response, uh, could you please read uh, for me? It's better. The title of this document is Speech by Comrade Noon Chea. Deputy Secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Kampuchea and Chairman of the Standing Committee of the Assembly of the People's Representatives of Kampuchea at the banquet given in honor of the delegation of the Assembly of the People's Representatives of Kampuchea uh, in Peking, the 3rd of September, uh, 1978. Uh, we asked, we established yesterday that you left on this trip uh, for, uh, to Peking on the 2nd of September. And I also asked you yesterday whether you recalled uh, a banquet that was held uh, the day after your arrival. Uh, does this refresh your recollection uh, that Noon Chea gave a speech uh, at that banquet? <coughs> Response. I don't remember having heard him giving any speech uh, because uh, this was uh, conducted inside uh, the hall. But I think uh, w he could have uh, uh, some conversation with uh, people inside. Well, let me also uh, refer you to a prior statement uh, that you gave uh, in this case. And, uh, Mr. President, at, at this time, I would like uh, to refer the witness to uh, E3 uh, slash 423. Uh, and it is question, answer, answer and question A27 in that interview. And uh, if I may, uh, the witness was previously provided uh, with this statement. Uh, but if he doesn't have a copy, I have an additional copy to give him today. The President, uh, you may uh, proceed. Uh, court officer is now instructed uh, to take the document uh, from the court prosecutor and hand it over to the witness. Uh, Mr. Sutong, I'd, I'd like to refer you to uh, a question and answer from uh, your previous interview with the uh, Office of Co-Investigating Judges, um, which is question and answer number 27. Uh, question, did Mr. Nunche say anything during the visit to China? And the answer you gave was, quote, I do not recall that. I only know that during a party, he talked about economic activities. When you said that he talked about economic activities 
during a party, uh, what were you referring to? Um, so response. I was not very interested in economic activities, but I guess uh, his visit was part of his uh, vocation or work, maybe. And do you recall whether Noon Chea had meetings uh, with any Chinese leaders during this trip? Response, uh, y uh, yes, I do, but I don't remember those uh, people. I want to turn to uh, the period during the trip when you were in North Korea. Um, do you recall uh, when you were in North Korea whether there was any special event that was being celebrated at the time? Response. The, the only thing I remember is that uh, w when we landed, uh, we were received by people, then immediately he went to the countryside. Did you travel with him to the countryside in North Korea? Response. Yes, I do. No, yes, I did. Can you tell the chamber um, how did the living conditions and food, available food in North Korea uh, during your trip there, uh, how did that compare to the conditions uh, back in Democratic Kampuchea. The President, uh, witness, could you please hold on? International Council for Mr. Ying Zeri, you may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm forecasting that at some point today the prosecution will be asking for additional time. I'm objecting to this question in particular because it's not relevant. What is the relevance of this question? There is none, especially when considering the purpose for bringing this witness. So I would object on the grounds of relevance. Mr. President, I, I will not be asking for additional time, and I think it is relevant to get observations of this witness uh, on living conditions in democratic Cappuccia, and he has an opportunity to compare it to what other countries, including North Korea and China. So I think uh, it's reasonable to ask uh, one question on this, which is to get his observations on this issue, and then I plan to move on. The President. The objection is not sustained. A witness is now instructed to respond to the question put uh, by the prosecutor. <laughs> the President, uh, the witness appears to have forgotten the question. Co-prosecutor is now advised uh, to Put a question again so that uh, witness can respond. Uh, yes, my question, Mr. Sotong, was how did the living conditions and food or meals um, in North Korea uh, compare to the living conditions and meals uh, that you had while you were in Democratic Kampuchea? Response. The foods uh, and meals uh, in China and in North Korea were not the same as the food in Cambodia, for sure. And what
what do you mean when you say they were not the same? Response. I can talk uh, about the food in North Korea, but uh, Chinese food uh, were not the same as Cambodian food, for example. In Cambodia, we would have uh, the sour soup, uh, the hot pot uh, soup, so on and so forth, which are different uh, from the Chinese uh, dishes and also different from the Western dishes. I just don't know what uh, the Korean soup would uh, be like. I'm just talking uh, and responding to your question about this. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad you explained that. Uh, the the uh, question that I was asking more had to do whether the amount of food that was available. Were there, was there any difference in the food, that, food rations that were available to you in China and North Korea compared to the food rations that you had in Democratic Kampuchea? Your Honor, objection. The President, uh, witness, could you please hold down? Counsel for Nguyen Chia, you may now proceed. As much as this is making me hungry for some kimchi. I, I think the witness is clearly being led here now at this point. The uh, questions about the amount of food uh, is clearly being led, so I think that's inappropriate and object to that. Mr. President, that was not a leading question. It's an open-ended question for the witness to answer as he, as he sees. There's absolutely nothing suggestive in the question. The President, uh, International Council for Mr. Ng Sari, you may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, what his ho how much food his hosts provided him, the Chinese or the North Koreans being good hosts, what does that have to do with how much food he had uh, when he was in Cambodia? Also, if we look at his statements, he clearly indicates that he had sufficient food while he was living in Phnom Penh, and since he didn't travel outside Phnom Penh, he couldn't tell about the conditions elsewhere. So this line of questioning, in my humble opinion, is utterly futile. How much food the Chinese host gave him while he was there, or the North Korean host? One only needs to look at television today to see that there's massive starvation in North Korea today. So we haven't laid a foundation. Has this gentleman traveled outside into the countryside? Has he gone into the homes? Has he met with the people? Has he seen what the people are eating in the villages? How much food is being provided to them? How can he possibly answer this question? And why is this question relevant? A foundation hasn't been led, but how much his host gave him and how tasteful the food was and how, how he can compare it to Cambodian food is utterly irrelevant. The President, uh, Council for Kilsampon, you may now proceed. Council Kung Sam On, thank you, Mr. President. I can see that this question is not relevant uh, when asking the witness to compare the food ration in Korea to that of Cambodia. This question seeks to ask for an explanation of his... idea concerning how he feels uh, uh, with regard to the food uh, offered to him in a banquet, for example, when uh, they were received uh, in a foreign country. And it is not really relevant uh, because if the question is addressing the food ration for the ordinary foreign national in, in Korea or whether 
uh, people conducted uh, or uh, had experience going down to visit uh, those people homes that he uh, they could be able to shed light on the food ration otherwise it's pointless the president uh, the objections by both councils are sustained witness is now instructed not to respond to the final question put uh, by the co-prosecutor and co-prosecutor is now advised uh, to rephrase the question in order to be in line with the facts at issue in this uh, scope of uh, case file 002 slash 1. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. I'll, I will move on to my next question. Uh, uh, do you recall whether uh, while Noon Chae uh, uh, was in North Korea, whether he met uh, with any of the leaders of that country, including Kim Il-sung? Response, no, I don't. And my last question about your trip is uh, to ask you uh, about the date uh, that you returned uh, to Cambodia. Um, as you sit here today, do you recall the exact date uh, on which um, the Noon Chea delegation flew back to Cambodia from its trip to China and North Korea? Response. I don't remember, but uh, I remember that uh, the return trip was immediate after immediately after uh, a week spent in China and another week spent in Korea. Um, Mr. President, to refresh the witness's recollection on the, the date of the return, uh, I'd like to refer again to the same document that we used yesterday, uh, which is E3-76 uh, at Khmer ERN zero zero seven zero one eight eight one through eight two English ERN zero zero one seven zero three eight five through one seven zero three eight six and French ERN zero zero seven zero one eight six five through 866. And uh, we've provided a copy of that previously to the witness. If we could put uh, uh, that page uh, up onto the screen. The President, uh, you may proceed. Uh, court officer is now instructed to take the document uh, from the prosecutor and have it handed over to the witness for examination. Uh, Mr. Sotong, uh, would I be correct again that you would prefer for me to read uh, the document to you? Uh, would that be helpful to you? The President, uh, Mr. Sotong, Please uh, repeat uh, your response, and please advise, uh, be advised again that wait until you see the red light on the mic uh, before you respond. Response, uh, uh, Mr. Co-Prosecutor, it is good that you uh, keep uh, reading it for me, please. Uh, the report that um, uh, we've just referenced to you 
is titled Noonchea Delegation Returns Home from PRC and DPRK. This is a report from the Phnom Penh Domestic Service from the 16th of September, 1978, and the uh, text reads as follows, quote, The delegation of the Kampuchean People's Representative Assembly, led by Comrade Noon Chea, Deputy Secretary of the Central Committee of the KCP and Chairman of the Standing Committee of the Kampuchean People's Re Representative Assembly, returned to Phnom Penh from Peking by plane at 11.30 on the 16th of September, 1978, following the successful conclusion of its visit to the PRC and the DPRK. Comrade Kusam Pan, Chairman of the State Presidium, Comrade Ing Suri, Deputy Prime Minister for Foreign Affairs, Comrade Vorn Vet, Deputy Prime Minister for Economy, Comrade Mei Pong, Chairman of the Committee for Communications, Comrade Cheng An, Chairman of the Committee for Industry, Comrade Ng Turit, Ministry of Social Affairs, Comrade Yun Yat, Minister of Propaganda, Culture and Education, and many cadres from various ministries went to Pochatong Airport to extend warmest welcome to Comrade Chairman Noon Chea and the delegation. Does that refresh your recollection that you returned to Cam Cambodia from your trip on the 16th of September, 1978? Response. I don't think I remember this very well. The uh, two media reports uh, that I have uh, described and shown to you uh, indicate that your delegation left on the 2nd of September, 1978, and returned on the 16th of September, 1978, which is a period of two weeks. Is that consistent with your memory of the total length of your trip to China and North Korea? Response, yes it is. Thank, thank you. I'd now like to turn some questions, um, turn to some questions regarding uh, your role in delivery of documents. Uh, in your role as Nunchea's messenger, uh, did you deliver or pick up documents uh, for Nunchea? Response, no, I didn't. Mr. Sotong, did you deliver documents from Noon Chea to Doit at S21? Uh, no, man. Response. Yes, I did. Uh, I, um, on some occasions, picked up letters from Nguyen Chia to Dutch and from Dutch back to Nguyen Chia. Who asked you to take documents from Nguyen Chia to Dutch uh, or to get documents from Dutch and bring them back to Nguyen Chia? Response. He presented them to me himself. When you say he presented them to you, who are you referring to? Response. He here refers to Nguyen Chia. When you uh, delivered documents from Noon Chea to Deutsch. Where did you, uh, where was it that Noon Chea provided those documents to you? Where is it that you met Noon Chea and he gave you the documents? Good 
response. Uh, I would uh, get uh, these letters at the door and uh, people would uh, be waiting to uh, get the paper or to give the paper. And when you say you got the documents at the door, uh, the door of w what location? Whose house or what location was it where you picked up documents from Noon Chea? Response, I don't remember the exact location, but I'm sure that it was a Dutch location, Dutch office. Okay, that, that was my next question, which is where, where did you go to, to deliver the documents to Deutsch uh, or to pick up documents from Deutsch? What I'm asking you first is uh, when you received documents from Noon Chea, where did, where did you receive the documents from Noon Chea? Response. I only know the place where I uh, delivered uh, the documents to the place at Deutsch office. Who, who was it that informed you where Deutsch's office was uh, in order that you could go there to deliver documents? Response. Uh, it is difficult to find the location because uh, it was a long time ago. I'm afraid we can't find it now. Um, I wasn't asking you about the exact location, so I just want to be clear. Um, my question to you is, uh, do, you, do you remember uh, who told you uh, where to go to deliver documents to Deutsch. Response. Um, it depends. Sometimes Pang would uh, do that, sometimes Nguyen Chia. When you delivered documents to Deutsch at his house or office, um, would you talk to him? Response, N no, I wouldn't uh, because I was uh, received at the door, uh, of, uh, at the gate indeed, uh, to handle the documents hand documents to them, uh, to him. I'd like to, uh, again, uh, refresh your recollection uh, by referencing um, your prior statement to the Office of Co-Investigating Judges. And Mr. President, uh, I again would like to um, have the witness reference uh, document E3 slash 423, uh, in this case, question and answer A106. And uh, the witness already has the, the document, so I request to show uh, that portion of the document on the screen. Yes, you may proceed. Um, Mr. Sotong, there's actually two uh, answers of yours I'd like to refer you to. The first one uh, is answer 106 um, in response to a question, so where did you meet 
with Deutsch when you delivered and fetched mails from him, your answer was, quote, I met with Deutsch at the entrance of his house, but I'm not sure if it was his house or S21. And then later on, uh, at answer, question and answer 125, uh, and uh, question and answer 125, uh, question was, so in conclusion, are a lot of points mentioned by Deutsch yesterday saying that he knew you and used to talk to you true? A and your answer was, quote, yes, they are true. When I received mails from him, I always chatted with him. The next question and answer, number 126, question, during your chat, what did you talk about? Answer, we just chatted for fun. We did not mention about content of the mails. Was the t testimony that you provided uh, to the Office of Co-Investigating Judges that I just read truthful? Response. Yes, I did not uh, discuss the content of the document. I simply uh, chatted uh, with him because I had nothing to do with the content of the email. I simply uh, say hello to him or ask him how he was. And can you describe uh, for the court the, uh, what the documents, uh, can you describe the appearance of the documents that you delivered between Nunchea and, and Deutsch? For example, were they in an envelope? Uh, how, did the how were the documents presented to you uh, that you delivered between Deutsch and Nunchea? No, I simply uh, handed it over to him and I did not ask him for any details or anything at all. And I simply uh, fetched uh, the uh, document uh, back and I did not uh, chat at length with him. I understand that. Um, what I'm asking is, were the documents... The, the President. Uh, I hand over to Judge uh, Zongmark Laven. I just want you to clarify something for the transcript. Can you give us the reference of the documents you are talking about? A while ago you said it was number E-423, if I am not wrong. Now, it would appear that the document that you are using has reference D234-43. Is that indeed the number? Mm, uh, yes, uh, uh, Judge Laverne, though I have it, and maybe it didn't come through in the translation. The original case file number is D234-23. And uh, it's the it's a lengthy uh, statement uh, that was taken starting on the 2nd of December uh, 2009, but it continued until the 4th of December. Um, it's been assigned an E3 number in the recent uh, uh, annexes that were submitted to us, so we've been referring to the E3 number. But the original, <coughs> the original case file number is D234-23. The President, you may proceed. Um, Mr. Sot Tung, um, uh, the question I'm asking you now is when you received documents uh, from Nunchea to deliver to Deutsch or from Deutsch 
to bring to Nunchea. Were those documents in an envelope? Yes, they were. And was there anything written on the cover of the envelopes? Nothing, but uh, it merely addressed uh, to the recipient of the document, namely Deutsch. And for the documents you picked up from Deutsch that you were to deliver to Nunchea, uh, did those documents also have a name on the envelope? I don't know. Did you ever look inside the envelopes to see what kind of documents were in there? No, I dare not open the, the envelope. How uh, thick uh, were the envelopes of documents that you delivered from Deutsch to Nunchea? It was the normal uh, envelope and it was at the sick of the uh, book. And when you received those documents from Deutsch, uh, did you deliver them directly to Nunchea? Respond. It was sent through Pong, or sometime he delivered himself. Did you ever deliver those documents directly to Noon Chea, or was it always through Pong? There were only two people, Nun Chi and Pang. Do I understand then uh, that there were occasions where you did deliver these documents directly to Nun Chea? Is that right? Anumyan. Yes, I did. In regards to Pong, was there a time uh, where Pong uh, disappeared and was replaced by someone else? I don't know. Do you recall a person named Lin or Ken who was Pong's deputy? I, I don't know. I don't know who replaced Pong. Did Nunchea have other messengers who also delivered and received documents for him in addition to you? I don't know, because I uh, did not uh, stay in one place. I moved around, so I did not know. How long was the period of time that you delivered documents 
between Deutsch and Nunchea. How long did you do that for? It was not for long. And it took me only five minutes to fetch the documents. My question is, do you recall the period of time that you did it? Was it a matter, was it for, uh, in terms of how many months or how many years did you perform this task of delivering documents between Deutsch and Nunchea? Response. It was about a month or so, but I did not, I do not recall it well, but uh, I delivered the document four or five times, so it was about a month or so. Mr. Sutong, I'd like to again refer you back to the statement you gave to the Office of Co-Investigating Judges, which is uh, the same document as before, uh, E3-423, uh, also case file number D234-23, and in this case, the, uh, I'd like to refer you to question and answer 208. And Mr. President, if I can put, uh, put that uh, uh, question and answer on the screen. Yes, you may proceed. And Mr. President, I'll actually read both uh, question and answer 207 and 208 in order to understand the context. And starting with 207, uh, you, you were asked the following question. We are not yet clear about what Deutsch stated in front of you on the 2nd of December 2009. He said that you worked with him in relation with mail delivery from the 15th of August 1977 until you accompanied Mr. Noon Chea during his visit to China and Korea. Why did you not continue working with Mr. Noon Chea and Deutsch at S21 anymore? Your answer to that was, I forgot completely. What Deutsch stated is correct, but I do not recall. The next question was, quote, can you confirm how long it was from August 1977 until the time you accompanied Mr. Noon Chea to China. And your answer was, quote, it was about one year. I cannot recall exactly. When you said the estimate that you gave uh, back uh, on the, uh, in December of 2009 of one year, uh, does that refresh your recollection that the period uh, that you delivered documents uh, between Deutsch and Nunchea was approximately one year? Response. It was not as long as one year. It was about a month or so. It was not that long anyway. There were many other messengers. I, I do not know each and every one of them, but uh, there were many others. Well, let me ask you this. When, when was it that you first started delivering documents between Deutsch and Noon Chea. Was it when you first began to work for Noon Chea in 1975, or was it later on in the regime? Okay. 
started uh, in 1978. And uh, 1979, of course, uh, we fled. So you started delivering documents to Nunchea sometime in 1978. And when was it that you stopped this task of delivering documents between Deutsch and Nunchea? It was sometime in 1979. When you returned uh, from your trip to China and North Korea in September 1978, did you continue uh, working for Noon Chea and delivering documents between Deutsch and Noon Chea after that trip? No, uh, then I had already stopped. Did, did you continue to work as Noon Chea's bodyguard and messenger after you returned from your trip to China and North Korea? I have I had already stopped working. What is it that you did for the approximate three month period uh, of the democratic Kampuchi regime um, after you returned uh, from China and North Korea in mid September nineteen seventy eight? until uh, January 1979. W what did you do during that time period? I was a uh, security guard, uh, a normal security guard. And where were you assigned during that period? I was guarding around his workplace. When you say you were guarding around his workplace, who, who are you referring to? Back then, uh, there were Sin and others I cannot recall. I cannot recall their names. Sin and others. But Pong was the head. I understand that. I was asking you whose workplace uh, were you guarding? Were you referring to K1 or are you referring to some other location? Yes, it was K1. During the period that you worked uh, as Noon Chea's uh, bodyguard or messenger. Uh, did he have other offices where he worked uh, in addition to K-1? I don't know about that. Were you still uh, working as a guard uh, at K-1 
in January 1979 uh, when the Vietnamese, Vietnamese troops uh, approached Phnom Penh? I had already stopped working as a guard then, uh, but I was transferred uh, to the uh, transport unit. When were you transferred to the transport unit? Now, President. It was in 1979 and 1978, and my superior was Gu, alias Sun, who designated me with the task. Where was uh, the transport unit located? It was located somewhere in Pusat province, but I do not know the exact location. I do not know the district in which this unit is lo was located. Hmm. I'm not sure whether I misunderstood or there was a problem in the translation. Um, did you say that it was located in Pursat province? Pursat. Um, Response. Yes, I did. Pursat, uh, uh, which is uh, near the border. Did you, are you talking about a position that you assumed um, before uh, the departure from Phnom Penh when the Vietnamese invaded? Or was this a position you assumed uh, in January 1979 after the Vietnamese invaded and you fled Phnom Penh? Response, it was after. So up until the time that you fled Phnom Penh, did you remain working uh, as a guard at K-1? Response, no, I didn't. Let me try asking you the question this way. Uh, the day uh, that you fled Phnom Penh, when the Vietnamese arrived, who were you working for at that time? Response. I fled with a unit. We went uh, to the west direction and we reached the border. Later on, we were assigned uh, some tasks in the military and also in the transportation unit. What was the unit that you fled, uh, fled Phnom Penh with? Response. I think um, it could have been the unit of K1, and we fled uh, all the way to Badambong province. And when you fled uh, Phnom Penh and K1 um, in January 1979, do you know what happened to the documents that were at K-1? Uh, 
Response, I don't know. Do you know whether documents were burned and destroyed at K1? Response, I don't uh, have any knowledge of this because uh, I already fled uh, the area. Some people who were behind could have uh, been familiar with this. Uh, Mr. Sutong, I'd again like to refer you uh, to your prior statement in this case. Uh, Mr. President, this is again the same document, E3-423. Or D two three four slash two three, and uh, the question uh, that I would like to put on the screen and refer the witness to is question and answer one nine four. If I may. The president, you may proceed. Um, Mr. Sot Tung, uh, in your last interview, uh, you were asked the question, in 1979, when the Vietnamese soldiers liberated Cambodia and you ran to Thai Cambodian border, where were those documents taken to? Your answer was, quote, the documents were burned off. I did not participate in burning those documents off but I knew they burned them because when I ran away and turned back, I saw smoke. I knew that they were burning documents off. Is it correct that when you fled K-1, you saw smoke uh, and concluded that they were burning documents? Response, uh, I would like to reject uh, such statement. I never made such statement. Thank you. During the time that you worked as Nun Che as a bodyguard, uh, did you ever go with him to Borai Kila? Did you understand my question? The President, uh, International Co Prosecutor may repeat the question because uh, the interpreter fail to render the exact uh, location in your uh, question and the witness uh, has not uh, received uh, the full message. Uh, my, my question, uh, Mr. Satong, was during the time you worked as Noon Che's bodyguard, uh, did you ever go with him to Borai Kila? Response, no, I didn't. Mr. President, I'd like to refer again uh, to the witness's prior statement, the same document, E3 slash 423 at D234 D234 slash 23 
and it is uh, question and answer uh, 55. I'm, so, I'm sorry, question and answer uh, 53 and 55. If I might put those on the screen uh, and uh, ask the witness about them. The President, you may proceed. Mr. Sotong, I'm going to read to you a, a series of questions from A53 through A55 of this interview. Uh, question. Within the period you were Noon Chea's bodyguard and when he traveled inside the country, where did you escort him to? Answer. I used to escort him to Barakila, provinces, and rural areas. Question. How many times did you escort Mr. Noon Chia to Barakila? Uh, answer. About thrice. Question. What did Mr. Noon Chea do when he went to Borakaya each time? Answer, he went to open study session. That is all I know, but I do not know what he talked about at that time because I was in charge of safeguarding outside. Does that refresh your recollection that you did go with Noon Chea to Borakaya during the time you worked as his bodyguard? Objection, Your Honor. that the witness said he didn't go to Borekela. He never went to Borekela. So the statement won't refresh the witness's recollection. It will contradict the statement he's already made. I think that's the proper terminology to use here. Because he's on record now saying, according to my notes, he never went to Borekela. And now he's been put a previous statement, which will contradict that if he agrees with it. I don't think it will refresh his recollection. Thank you. Mr. President, that's for the witness to tell us. He's, at times when he's been shown this, it's refreshed his recollection and he's confirmed it. And at other times, as just happened, he said, no, that's not correct. So it's, it's for the witness uh, to, to tell us tell us that, but uh, not, not for counsel to make arguments at this time about uh, to characterize the testimony. I, I completely agree with the prosecutor. It's for the witness to tell us. So the prosecutor should say, how do you reconcile the two? How do you... What's your reaction to this juxtaposed with this? Perhaps the prosecutor shouldn't use refresh recollection. That's argumentative in my position. The President, the objection is not sustained. Witness is now instructed to respond to the question put by the co-prosecutor. The President continues. Co-prosecutor may put this question again because witness appears to have uh, forgotten the question already. Uh, Mr. Sotong, did, did you go with Noon Chea to Borakaila? <coughs> Response. Allow me to confirm this. Uh, indeed, uh, he wanted me to uh, go there. He worked at uh, Borei Kaila, and I was uh, I was guarding at the exterior of uh, that premises. And because time passed by very long, long time ago, I could have been confused at times. What did uh, Noon Chea do at Borei Kaila? Well, we are, I didn't say Response, um, he conducted uh, the study sessions. Uh, how often did he conduct study sessions at Borei Kaila? 
Response, although I don't remember quite well, but uh, it could have been once every three or four months. Um, how many people uh, attended and participated in the study sessions uh, that he conducted? Response. It depends. Sometimes there were 10 people, sometimes there were 20 or 30. <clears throat> Did your unit ever participate? Uh, in the study sessions that were led by Noon Chea at Bore Kaila? Amen. Response, no. Who, who were the participants who went to these study sessions uh, at Bore Kaila? Response, people from various sectors. Did you see any other leaders also attend and uh, speak at study sessions at Borai Kila? Response, no, I don't know. I don't know them. Did Noon Chea ever talk about traitors or enemies during these study sessions? Response. Mm, I didn't know anything about this because I was at the outside. Uh, I did not go inside to know all the details. Mr. President, I'd again like to refer uh, the witness uh, to a prior statement of his uh, in this same document, E3-423, and uh, this time it is question and answer uh, 169, if I may show that on the screen. The President, could you please uh, repeat uh, the document number because in Khmer uh, it appears to be the new document uh, because we heard that it was E43 or something. Are you referring to the old document or new one, please? Y yes, this is the, sa the same document that, that we've been using. So it is the case file number is D234-23. And uh, it's been assigned E3 slash 423. But it's the same document we've been using, and it's question and answer 169. Response, uh, uh, rather, the President, you may proceed. In your uh, prior statements uh, in this court, to this court, uh, to the Office of Co-Investigating Judges, uh, you were asked the question, quote, while opening study sessions for bodyguards, did they ever talk about traitors? And your answer, quote, was that Ta Noon Chia talked about this point. So my question to you, Mr. Sotong, is do you remember Noon Chea talking about traitors. Response. I didn't know that he talked uh, about this, but I learned that uh, he educated us to uh, protect ourselves uh, uh, from the enemy.
Where, where did you learn that? Response, I don't remember the location. Did uh, you uh, provide uh, and your team provide security for Noon Chea at large rallies that were held on ceremonial occasions such as the anniversary of the party uh, or the anniversary of 17 April? Response, yes, I did. And did you hear the speeches that were given at those rallies? I'm sorry about him, I'm Response, uh, speeches could be heard, uh, but I uh, don't remember because I uh, was not uh, very interested in the speeches. Where were these uh, rallies held on occasions such as the anniversary of the party or the anniversary of 17 April? Response. I don't quite recollect uh, them because uh, at times uh, rallies could have been conducted at either Bore Kaila or at K1 and other places. Do you remember any rallies being held at the Olympic Stadium? Response, I don't remember. How many people would be present for these large rallies that were held on occasions uh, like the uh, 17th of April or the anniversary of the party? How many people were present? Um. Response, there were quite a lot of people, although I don't remember the exact uh, number, there were a lot of people, more than 50. And was it your responsibility to um, provide security to Noon Chea during these events? Response, uh, yes, I was, uh, but I was uh, assigned uh, to provide security uh, at the outside uh, of the premises. Were there also people who were assigned uh, to guard Noon Chea inside uh, the rallies, inside the premises where the rallies were held? Response, uh, the people who were assigned uh, to provide the security uh, were from the Y-10 uh, unit uh, under chairmanship of uh, Tamias. The, the translation of the person you identified did not come uh, through very well. Who, who was the chairman uh, responsible uh, for Yoten that you just referred to? Uh, 
response. Uh, the person who was in charge of the whole office was Pang. Did you see other leaders uh, of the party uh, present at these rallies? Response, I don't uh, recall it. Uh, there were quite a few cadres. Well, did you see Pol Pot at these rallies? <coughs> Response, yes, I did, indeed. Did you see Ing Siri at these rallies? Response, yes, I sometimes did, but sometimes I didn't see him. And what about Q Sampan? Did you see him at these rallies? Response, yes, I did. I saw them all. Who all would give speeches at these rallies that celebrated uh, the anniversary of the party and the anniversary of 17 April? Response, uh, I don't uh, know it about this because I was uh, not close enough uh, to note this. Were you ever able to see, uh, ever able to see the podium uh, at any of these rallies, or were you always outside the event? Response: uh, The location was uh, sealed uh, by the wall. The uh, so could, people could not see inside from the outside. I take it then that the answer to my question is that you you were you were never able to see inside and see the podiums or stages at these events. Is that correct? Response, yes, it is, but uh, during the events, I would never go inside uh, the location, but only after the events concluded, uh, I would go in. Why would you go in after the event had concluded? Response, uh, as uh, we were in charge of security matters, we had to avail ourselves to inspect the location. I want to turn to another uh, uh, subject now, uh, Mr. Sotong. And Mr. President, I'd like to uh, show the witness a photograph now. Um, this photograph is in the case file uh, in uh, Ben Kiernan's book, The Pol Pot Regime, uh, IS 4.25 at 00678630. Uh, now, because the quality of the photocopy that's in Xilab is hard to see, so we have a better quality copy that I'd like to put on the screen and show the witness that's the same photo that's, uh, that's uh, hard, it's a little hard to see on, on Xilab, if I may proceed.
The President, you may proceed. And I'd like to give a, a copy of the photo to the witness and also put it on the screen. The President, indeed, uh, you may proceed. The President, Council for Kyo Sompon, you may proceed. Council uh, Kong Sompon, with uh, Mr. President's uh, leave, uh, may we also be uh, given a copy of the photo so that uh, we could really see it as a uh, prosecutor indicated that it had to be seen on the screen. The President, uh, International Court uh, Prosecutor, could you advise the court whether you got another copy available of this document to be presented to the Council? Uh, I don't have a, another copy, but we, do, we did make a better copy to show on the screen, so uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps we put up the, uh, we may have uh, erroneously put up the other version. The President, uh, as long as uh, you can have uh, the document uh, be put up on the screen referring to IS uh, 4.25 and clear enough, then please uh, proceed. Um. Mr. Witness, do you, do you have the photograph uh, that I've given to you? Response, uh, I'm afraid I cannot really uh, see this photo without my uh, reading glasses. The President, uh, actually on the screen of the, the computer, there is no photo being put up. Yet, uh, co-prosecutor is advised uh, not to uh, put any questions to the witness uh, yet and uh, wait until the photo is uh, up on the screen first. Uh, yes, Mr. President, um, I can make sure that we have the right photograph here or since it's past 10.30, uh, if you wish, we can take our break now and I can make sure that they have... Okay. I'm, I'm told they have the correct photograph on, on the screen now. Um, and I'd also ask if, uh, whether the witness uh, has his reading glasses here that he can use. Mr. Sotong, do you have your reading glasses here with you? Amen. Bye. Response, um, I'm afraid I haven't brought uh, them with me. Yeah, my mom heard. The photo here is uh, not uh, visible enough, but I can see that uh, Paul Pot uh, appears in the photo and some other individuals uh, hardly uh, to be identified. As I look, uh, pra the President, uh, witness, could you advise the chamber the reading glasses? Um, um, what kind of uh, reading glasses would you prefer? Response, uh, uh, I am wearing the 2.25 uh, uh, reading glasses. Uh, the President, have you brought them with you? Response, no, uh, not. I haven't brought them with me. Uh, the President, uh, in order to facilitate this, uh, court officer is now instructed to ensure that a pair of reading glasses uh, is available and given to the witness momentarily to ensure that he is able to read or to uh, look at the photo. Since it is now appropriate time, we may uh, adjourn and that uh, 
the following session will be resumed by 10 to 11. Court officer is now instructed to ensure that uh, his duty counsel and the witness uh, have a proper place uh, to have uh, arrest and uh, have them return to the courtroom um, by 10 to 11. Counsel for injury, you may proceed. Counsel Ang Adam. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Ian Sari has requested that uh, he be excused from uh, being in this uh, court proceedings, in this courtroom rather, because, uh, he, because of his health concern. And he would like uh, to ask that he be permitted to observe the proceeding from his holding cell instead. The President Council, you may be seated. And the Chamber has noted your request, uh, request uh, from Nguyen Chia through Council that he be excused uh, from the courtroom and uh, be permitted to observe the proceeding from his holding cell uh, from uh, now on until uh, the end of today's session. The Chamber has uh, noted uh, the request and therefore grants such request accordingly. Mr. Yang Sari is now excused and permitted to observe the proceeding from his holding cell through video link. However, the Chamber would like uh, to ask that uh, councils for Yang Sari present uh, Mr. Yang Sari's waiver immediately, the waiver signed uh, by uh, Mr. Yang Sari or given some print uh, by him. AV booth officers are now instructed to ensure that the video link is uh, properly connected to the holding cell so that uh, he can observe the proceedings from uh, his cell. Security personnel uh, are now instructed to bring Mr. Yang Sari to his holding cell. The court is adjourned. Some Jane Groucho.